Well, greetings in the name of the Lord. So good to be together on a nice, cool day, isn't it? I'd like to share with you uh, Psalm 32 as we begin. Psalm 32 talks about for, uh, asking the Lord for forgiveness and harboring kind of that sin in our hearts and trying to deal with it ourselves. Listen to what David says. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You righteous, sing all you who are upright in heart. As we begin the service together, I direct your attention to the silent prayer. And for those of you watching at home, it'll be on the screen in a moment. May the Lord richly bless you today. Amen. Thank you. 
Please rise for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word of God is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires, exposing us for what we are. He, he knows everyone everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from him, to whom we must explain all that we have done. Let us bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. From him you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him. You are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. But, but now in Christ Jesus, we who were once far away from God, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope through the gospel. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all, Please take a moment for personal reflection and confession. We continue. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O Lord, bend down your ear, and hear when I cry for mercy. For I am poor and needy, and you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Your mercy is abundant to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend the voice of my supplication. In the day of trouble I will call upon you for you will answer me. Teach me to walk in your way, O Lord, to walk in truth throughout my day. I am genuinely sorry for my sinful thoughts, prayers, and deeds. Turn my heart towards you. Teach me to walk in the truth of your word. O Lord, you are a God full of compassion and gracious and abundant in mercy and truth. Great is God's mercy to all who call upon him. There is a righteousness that comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. God presented Jesus Christ as a sacrifice of atonement for sin, and so all who believe are justified freely by his grace. As you believe, so be it. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Our first uh, reading lesson is from uh, Jeremiah 28, beginning at verse 5. This is uh, from the words of the prophet Jeremiah. There were going to be uh, two exiles to Babylon, and uh, this is his comment to some of the other prophets in Jerusalem between those two exiles to Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hanani, before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord, he said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Christians in Colossae, uh, Colossians chapter 3. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your mind on things above, not earthly things. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you've taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel today. The gospel lesson comes from Matthew 10, beginning in verse 34. Jesus is speaking. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we sing the message hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied into you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us share the text that's printed for us. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Each of the last uh, number of weeks we've been sharing uh, God's Word. Much of that is about how you could have peace with God and be sure of your eternal destiny. Clarification of who Jesus Christ himself was, deity in flesh. Today the message changes. Based on our opening psalm, it's about forgiveness. God's forgiveness to us and our forgiveness to one another in the family of God. So it's a message more today about our walk with God. The Declaration of Independence declares that all men are created equal. It was and remains the American dream. We all know it has been applied inconsistently, but it remains a dream. Abraham Lincoln opposed slavery and under its banner fought it. Franklin uh, Delano Roosevelt in proposing the New Deal cited its promise. The greatest speech of the 1960s Civil Rights Revolution was a speech by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. pushing the words of our founding fathers into reality. It was a masterful speech given in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC. Thousands gathered as he preached on the immortal principle that all men are created equal by God. It is a truth engraved in the American soul. It is a principle of Christianity. It is America's gift to the world. Like all dreams and principles, it is a dream still seeking fulfillment as we seek life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The following statement provides a truth both for us as individuals and as a nation. To forgive past injustice, to forgive past grievance, is what allows and creates an opportunity for change. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina is still working to implement the promises of our, of our Declaration of Independence. It is a God that we love. This God who has forgiven your past and my past. And he gives to each Christian the opportunity for change by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me share a story of Martin Luther King Sr., often called Daddy King by those who knew him. When Martin Luther King Sr. died in 1984, one black leader said, if we started our own country, he would be our George Washington. In his 84 years, he endured more than his share of suffering and hatred. During his childhood in Georgia, he witnessed lynchings. When he tried to register to vote in Atlanta, he discovered that the registrar's office was on the second floor of the city hall, but the elevator was marked whites only, the stairwell was closed, and the elevator for blacks was out of service. Martin Luther King Sr. is mostly remembered <coughs> for the accomplishments of his son, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., leader of the nonviolent civil rights movement, cut down by an assassin's bullet in 1968. But that was not the end of his pain. During a church service in 1974, his wife was playing the Lord's Prayer. A young black man rose in the congregation and began shooting. Mrs. King collapsed in a hail of gunfire while Daddy King watched in horror from the pulpit. Near the end of his life, he spoke about the policy of nonviolence he had come to embrace. He said, there are two men that I am supposed to hate. One is a white man who killed my son, and the other is a black man who killed my wife. I don't hate either one. There is no time for hatred. There is no reason for it either. Nothing that a man does takes him lower than when he allows himself to fall so low 
as to hate anyone. To hate is to live in the past, to dwell on deeds already done. Hatred is the most damaging emotion, for it gives a person you hate a double victory, once in the past and once in the present. There is no time for hate, not if you have learned how to forgive. Forgiving does not mean whitewashing the past, but it does mean refusing to live there. Forgiveness breaks the chain of bitterness and the insidious desire for revenge. As costly as it is to forgive, the lack of forgiveness costs more. End of quote. Each year, our congregation sets a goal to read more in the Bible this year than we did last. Each week, over the last number of weeks, I have published a thought for the week, which is encouraging you to take out your Bible and watch a video and then read a portion of the scripture. The last several weeks, we've been reading the letters of Paul in Ephesians and Colossians. Colossians is one of my favorite letters. In this letter, he reminds the new Christians of all ethnic backgrounds uh, what it is to live under the banner of Jesus Christ, where prejudice must cease to exist. He writes, neither Greek nor Jew, Scythian, slave nor free, but all in Christ. Jesus is our peace. He has destroyed every barrier, dividing the wall of hostility. In chapter 3 of Colossians, Paul provides guidelines for Christian behavior. He does so in Ephesians as well as Colossians. He has a very lengthy uh, section on rules for Christian behavior. Uh, this was very important for people who had been living and still were living in a pagan culture with pagan values but coming to know Jesus. Pagan values involved the worship of self and greed, and filthy language, lying to others to get ahead, sexual immorality, prejudice, hatred, filthy language, rotten speech, stealing and cheating. Hatred, rage, and anger are not compatible with living the Christian life. Martin Luther King senior knew and applied that truth. Paul is very clear that once you become a follower of Jesus Christ, these old habits must no longer be practiced. Yes, evil still exists, but in the midst of evil, Christians are to be called salt and light. These words of Paul are good reminders for us as we seek to live in our present culture. So what are the Qualities, or what qualifies as rotten speech, which leads to anger and hatred. Well, here's a few examples. Vulgarity, obscenity, indecent language, racial or ethnic uh, re insults, abrasive humor, harsh words, uh, mean-spirited comments, gossip, rumors, uh, false accusations, public criticism of your spouse or children, yelling or screaming and exaggerating the faults of others. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. Every time you open your mouth, either life or death comes out. For you see, when there is spiritual death inside, it will eventually show up in your words and actions. Everywhere we look these days, we sense the culture in both shock and upheaval. And so our responsibility as Christians is to pray for peace and to pray for leaders who can calm our streets. May God raise up Christian men and women to heal whatever divide there is. There was an old time preacher I remember reading about who liked to just kind of lean forward <laughs> and say, if you're going to be a Christian, be one. So what is the cure for a sick and struggling culture? The answer, when Christians stand in the gap and put into the practice the words of Jesus, we know that forgiveness starts with God. Forgiveness means it comes down to us from God, and then it goes out from us to other people. We forgive as God has forgiven us. And we extend grace to others as God has extended grace to us. We, the undeserving, have been showered with God's grace in Christ. And so in turn, 
Uh, we are to give the other undeserving sinners around us who have sinned against us that same outpouring of grace. From God to us, to others. From the cross to us, to others. Grace to us, grace to others. We do for others what God has done for us. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. He has put our sins behind his back and he throws them into the depth of the ocean. He remembers them no more. He blots them out. He cancels the debt we owe. He declares us not guilty. This is why Martin Luther King Sr. said, there are two men I am supposed to hate. One is a white man, the other is a black man. I don't hate either one. There is no time for that and no reason either. To hate is to live in the past, to dwell on deeds already done. I have no time to hate, he said. Not if you've learned how to forgive. Forgiving does not mean whitewashing the past, but it does mean refusing to live there. Because forgiveness breaks the chain of bitterness and the insidious desire for revenge as costly as it is to forgive, lack of forgiveness costs more. End of quote. We have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace, Paul writes. He has freely given it to us instantaneously and totally. Can we not do the same for those who have hurt us deeply? The message is simple and clear. Go and do for others what Christ has done for you. Forgiven people forgive people. Ah, but it's not always easy. And we do not always do it well. But it is the first thing we do as we seek to imitate Jesus. As a nation, we cannot forget our past, nor dare we erase our past. In Jesus, the future can change. And change begins with you and with me. If you want to know what love is like, go to Golgotha and fix your eyes on the man hanging from the center of the cross. Study what he did, and you will know true love. And then go and do for others what God has done for you. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all of our understandings keep your heart rejoicing in his forgiveness and pray that he lives through you to forgive those around you. Let us join together in singing the next hymn. Please rise as we join in our confession of faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit. 
As you know, we're not passing our plate right now. There is a plate out in front in the narthex and also in the community center. Feel free also to mail your donations in or to go to the website and click on online giving. Let's continue with our prayers for the people of God today. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church and all pastors and ministers that the good news of Jesus Christ would be proclaimed throughout this world. May we receive your word with gladness and sincerity of heart that we would be changed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those in authority over us, including the president, the governor, the mayor, and all who judge in this land. May they lead and guide us according to your word and your spirit. Turn the hearts of those who would harm us to you so that we can walk together instead of in opposition. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, grant to those who are in any trouble or want or sickness or anguish or peril or any adversity your grace for their healing, for their strength, for their comfort and their relief. We pray, Lord, especially those that suffer for the sake of your name and your word. Father, we lift up those in our congregation who are ill or in various states of illness, including Doug and Frank and Nancy and Dick. And Lord, we pray for healing of Rich and Bobby and Sandy friends of the icebergs. Give them courage, Lord, to stand firm in their afflictions and patience, knowing that you have them in the palm of their hand until the day of your deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would preserve us from the ravages of the COVID-19 virus and from every evil our hearts are saddened at the death of Grant Ahrens. We ask that you will uplift and encourage his family during this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, the civil unrest in our land can cause us fear and concern and frustration. Give us strength and courage in your great power and your ability to change and direct the course of events through your spirit. We lift up the families of those who have died during this unrest, that they'd be comforted. Lead us to offer open hearts, minds, and ears as we listen for opportunities to support and encourage those who are hurting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and faithfulness. Bless the homes and families of your people, that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Give your special grace to the widowed, the orphan, all mothers with child, the aged and the affirm, infirm. May we be the hands and feet of Jesus as you grant them comfort aid and protection. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our faith. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the closing hymn. singing, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.